All right, Jeff, uh, tell us how you first got involved uh, with the Canadian Centre for Men and Families and CAFE and men's health and all that. I first got involved uh, gradually through my YouTube channel and through uh, research on the internet and uh, I found out about CAFE after the Warren Farrell incident yep. uh, through the protests and I had no idea you had existed until that moment. You found out through the protests? Through the protests, a, yes. Do you want to speak to that? So uh, after it became big news on the internet, right? So I saw the huge protests outside and contrast that to what was what they were protesting, which was a, you know, a lecture which no one could have any problem with. Like, can't imagine why these people would have a problem with it. Um, so that piqued my curiosity. But also, I already knew a lot of. The, I already knew who Warren Farrell was, so mm -hmm. I already I was familiar with issues of uh, you know issues pertaining to domestic violence and violence against men and uh, just the way uh, the sexist bias that that sort of we accept as a society for some reason and it's hard mm -hmm. to say why uh, and it's time I think to put that to an end that the surprising thing is that this is an unprecedented mm -hmm. center mm -hmm. and this is sort of the first center of its kind and why is that why is it taking so long um, and why why I guess the big reason I'm supporting this is why not right there's no good reason not to well, there's a lot of bad reasons right? yeah maybe you can comment <laughs> on that because you've you didn't just get involved, you became you know, a board member of CAFE, you yeah. became a leader of this organization. And in the experiences you've had since, have you come to any conclusions about those questions, about why people have these sort of knee-jerk reaction, negative reactions against the events, against the various projects? I don't think that people do have negative reactions to it. I think that most people support us, but they don't know about us. So I think we need to tell them that we exist and remind them that, that we exist uh, so that they can support us Right. And people need to know that they're not alone, that they're not, uh, that we exist and that it's possible, right? They need to have some hope. So speak to the, we talked about CAFE, but speak to the Canadian Center for Men and Families Initiative. You were involved when I think there was a board meeting, we sat around the table and we said, you know what, we've been doing some good work, but maybe there's, you know, maybe there's a new project we can, we can add to that. And maybe what we need to do is is provide some services to men in need, not just talk about all the problems, but provide some solutions. Um, do you remember that meeting? I mean, can you comment what went through your head when that proposal first came forward, however it did? Let's open a facility. Let's move this into something concrete. Let's, you know, provide these services to people in need. I guess my thoughts were, how do we, uh, how do we get this project going, right? We need to first figure out what is needed, and at the same time, uh, but how do we know? Uh, we have to basically communicate to lots of people, find yeah. the people who can use us, that's the most important thing, and figure out what's most needed because we just were at a position of not really knowing because we're sort of uh, leading, we're sort of in, a, in unknown territory. And try to also learn from what's been done that's sort of similar to what, we've, what we're doing right now with women's groups, with women's centers, with uh, and Sheena's Place would be a good example, right? Mm -hmm, they have mm -hmm. a working model that works, but they're trying to adapt that to helping males. And so we need to try and incorporate as many uh, existing working models as we can, figure out how to uh, harmonize them, how to make, how to make a new model uh, that works for us. If you could look into the future, um, five, ten or more years into the future, and um, and this place has you know, been around for, for a decade or so. How do you see society changing um, in that kind of you know, short to medium term horizon as a result of you know, some of the efforts that we're doing today? I think that society will adapt to maybe have a better understanding of men and how, how they think, how they're different, their, what their needs are um, as compared with women and how similar they are to women. And um, Basically, we'll be able to uh, better better meet their needs and better serve them uh, as people. My name is Jeff Stone. I support boys, men, and families, and that's why I'm supporting the Canadian Center for Men and Families.